Welcome to Nugget Shooter Journals. Uh, I'm out hunting today with a good friend, Sean. He's up the wash here somewhere. But uh, we're into this little wash here, and uh, if you look around, you start noticing something. Yep, that's hand stacking right there. And right there where my GPZ is, is hand stacking. Old hand stacking from the old timers. And they were working this wash right here. Throwing all the material up out of the wash and working it. It's been really worked hard down below here and up above. And we're kind of hunting around in here hoping for a nugget. Haven't got one yet. But look at old barrel cack is just hanging on there. But the old timers sure worked hard here. So we're really hoping for a piece of gold or two today. It's already getting hot in Arizona. We're uh, going to be up to 96 or 98 degrees today. And it's already at least 90. Kind of hot and sweaty up in this wash, but uh, that's why this time of year I don't like to go out alone. I usually take somebody with me. And Tammy didn't want to climb all the way up here today, so she's waiting at home to see if we get some gold. I got a nice breeze blowing. That sure does feel good, and uh, I'll get back with you if I get over something. So far, it's nothing but trash. That's kind of typical. Be back. Well, my friends, I'm out of steam. It's hot out here. Uh, first time I've been out in the heat this year is because uh, spring just got over with. This wash just looks juicy. Look at those hand stack piles. And for you guys that don't know what hand stacking is, um, it's where the old timers, or new timers, but this was done a long time ago. Um, they take all the rocks out of the wash and put them in piles up along the edge of the wash so they can run a dry washer and move the material underneath the rocks and get the gold. And it's always a telltale sign that a wash has been worked long ago. And you can see up over there, they worked up that little gully on the side too. And they really worked this hard in here. And no nuggets so far, but it's just too hot. I'm uh, gonna save this for next year. It's just too darn hot, my friends. Yeah. But you don't always get gold when you go out. And nor do I figure there's no gold in a wash just because I got into it and didn't find any. Um, part of it is today, I'm just too wore out. It's hot and I'm tired and I'm about ready to call today. I'm gonna go back and look at this area more on the map and uh, put it on the list for next year. And it's about time for us to start headed farther north in the pine trees and uh, the higher elevations, 4,000 feet and up, and do some prospecting, by golly, because it's getting hot here. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit when we get back to the uh, the office. So uh, hold on, and I'll see you after a bit. So I'm sitting here in a buggy waiting on Sean, and look. I guess he's liking the shade right there. Beautiful snake. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know if his tail is broken or something. He's having trouble rattling. It looks like he's crippled. Yeah, his tail's broken. Interesting. But he's going under the buggy. I really don't want to run him over. Yeah, I'll make sure he's not there when we leave. Shoo him out. Yep. Got to pay attention out here, don't you? But he can't rattle. See that broken tail right there? He cannot rattle, my friends. And that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. I'm going to uh, get out and get a shovel and poke him off and get him out of it from under the buggy. Got to love the Arizona desert. Alrighty, well after getting home and uh, researching the area a little bit and talking to a buddy that does work for me in uh, claims and claiming areas, it appears that that area is open. And uh, despite the rattlesnake with no rattle, I think we're probably going to claim it. And I think we're going to go back up this weekend and probably give it another good shot. And this time actually go up and hunt instead of just kind of looking around and uh, doing just a little bit of 
bopping around with the detectors. We're actually going to go up there and hunt it for a day and see if we can get some gold. And uh, if we do, then we're probably going to go ahead and uh, move forward with claiming the area for prospecting and uh, mining. Um, when I say it looks juicy and really good, it does. I mean, the, the area has been worked. And it looks like uh, the last time it was claimed or under claim was back in the 40s, and uh, which makes it even more interesting. There's a lot of old work as we found up farther on the hill, and I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it myself. So I guess uh, we'll probably film this for you when we go back up there. And I'm going to try to talk Tammy into going with She doesn't like climbing the hill. But I'm sure Sean will be going up there with me. And uh, I've got more time now that I'm retired. So I can actually go around and uh, look. This is my very last day of uh, work today. I don't know if I'm excited or, or what. It's kind of a weird feeling. But everybody keeps telling me I'm going to work more after I'm retired than I do when I'm uh, working. So we'll see how that works out. I'm thinking I'll maybe be working more, but it'll be doing things that I really want to do. So, now we discussed it several times about when you find a new area. And finding this new area is one thing, but you have to be responsible enough, even if you find gold right away, to find out if you're on somebody else's claim, when it was last claimed, if it's available for claim, um, and move forward at that point. If you keep going back to somebody else's claim, even if it's not marked, after you're back there three or four times, there's really not much excuse for not knowing where you are. And there are laws that apply to this, and you're supposed to check and know where you're at at all times out there in that desert. And it really doesn't make another claim holder very happy when he catches you on his claim and he says, well, gee, I didn't know it was claimed up. Been coming out here for three or four days and didn't know. <laughs> Why didn't you check, he'll say. So, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is this is one of the neatest spots I've found in quite a while that turned out to be open. And the amount of work they've done in there is just incredible. Now, we don't really expect to find a lot of gold in the actual old workings. There may be a couple nuggets here and there. But they're also chasing pockets in this spot. And with a metal detector chasing pockets becomes a whole new game. And uh, the ground's pretty shallow up there in a lot of spots. Some spots it's steeper. And metal detecting up on the hillsides and uh, looking for these pockets is what we're gonna be up to and it sounds pretty exciting to me. And some of the washes are pretty deep too. Although for the amount of hand stacking in these washes, they got it right down to bedrock and the bedrock is a uh, rotted granite in some cases, and in other spots, it's a conglomerate type uh, material. And then little stretches of schist and uh, other minerals. Cool area. Typical uh, mishmash of metamorphic and uh, sedimentary rock and uh, extrusive and intrusive and the whole mess. Arizona is just amazing. We're hunting right on the bones of the earth out here, you know, and, and you get to see the, the bedrock and uh, everything else. And I'm kind of spoiled that way. Um, a lot of folks in other areas, you go out and hunt gold in the hills or in uh, the valleys, you've got overburden to deal with. I mean, pine needles and branches and whatnot that have been falling for hundreds or thousands of years and have created a, a loam on top. So first you've got to get through all this material with your metal detector before you can actually get to the ground and the bedrock to be able to hear what's on it. We don't have that problem in a lot of cases. A lot of cases we're walking right on the bedrock and you walk into a wash and you're right on the bedrock. Some hillsides um, that we hunt and find gold, there's really nothing, not much in the way of um, material, uh, soil type material at all. It's just uh, broken bedrock, fragmented uh, rock and uh, exposed bedrock. And the gold doesn't have far to go down. So it makes it a little easier to metal detect. So anyway, I just thought I'd add this. Um, I told you I'd come back and we we're going to do a little research on this spot. And I was going to talk to you about it. And uh, I'm going to take you along with us. We get the claim done and get it filed and uh, get everything put together. I think it'll be a good educational thing for a lot of folks. And uh, how we go about deciding whether they're actually going to claim it. And at this point, it looks like we are. Um, 
but I'd really like to find some gold up there before we actually commit to uh, throwing a bunch of money at this thing. So we're going to sample and we're going to metal detect. So in other words, we're going to go up there and metal detect, but we're also going to be taking some samples and see what kind of material, uh, fine gold or smaller materials in the gravels in some of these washes. And I'm pretty excited and I hope you are too. And uh, we'll get back to this and uh, no, probably this weekend I'll start the next video on it. And hopefully we'll get into some nuggets and uh, I'll show you what goes on. And glad to have you along, my friends. If you like these videos, subscribe and uh, ring that bell. And I'd like to hear from you in the comment section if you got some questions or uh, anything you'd like to see me cover. So for now, my friends, I can shoot her out.